Good afternoon, uh, everyone, and uh, good morning to our friends uh, in the United States. It's uh, 5 p.m. here in Italy, and uh, we are in our prototype and de new development uh, products uh, here uh, in Italy, and I'm with uh, Claudio Formaggio. Uh, thanks, everyone, for being here. This afternoon, we will try to walk you through some uh, new applications of our products, uh, Modular Lift. Uh, the two applications that we will see is the climate control and uh, dry application and the clean room application. So we will start with the climate control. So Claudio, can you tell us something about what we see here? Yes, thank you, Max. Good afternoon to everybody. So this is the climate control application. The key factor of our project is control the temperature and the relative humidity inside a modular lift machine with a solution completed provided by modular. So the main issues uh, are uh, um, try to uh, modify um, as less as possible the standard structure of uh, our machine, um, understand and um, put uh, here in the system um, the correct air handling system in order to have uh, a wide range of regulation in terms of temperature and uh, relative humidity and uh, understand the correct procedure to install uh, this machine with uh, this uh, um, insulated panel integrated in the structure. So about the structure of the machine, here you can see inside this uh, box, this insulated box, a uh, standard modular lift machine configured with uh, internal bay uh, standard internal bay with automatic door inside. This model is uh, the biggest, is the MLD version, but uh, it's possible to have uh, uh, all the range of the um, modular lift uh, new generation, so from ME to MLD version. Mm, here we, we modify the structure just uh, adding 200 millimeters here from the standard structure and here around 1,500 millimeters with this maintenance door. About the air ending system, we studied um, uh, which could be uh, the best uh, solution for our application. We know that uh, there are different uh, uh, possible solutions, uh, for example, um, direct uh, um, uh, gas expansion, for example. But uh, uh, we used a um, um, solution with cold water. It's a cold um, water and glycol mixture provided by a chiller. With this uh, um, system, uh, we know that uh, it's possible to have a wide range of uh, regulation and uh, is very useful in uh, a machine like that that uh, could have uh, um, um, several configuration, um, a very uh, different volume in terms of uh, cubic meter inside. Think about a structure 4 meter or until 14 meters different uh, um, temperature set point and different external condition. So the air ending system is, um, has a, a chiller. Here is positioned, is placed behind uh, this machine, is externally, and provide cold uh, water and glycol mixture. It's a, a standard component. And um, this cold water uh, goes dark, directly to the air handling unit that uh, is inside the machine and is placed here behind this door. Now we go and we enter in this machine and I would like to explain the function of the air handling unit. Here there is the system with a filter in this position cold battery. After the cold battery, there is um, a sort of uh, defrost system for the cold battery. Then the post heating system that is uh, an optional, like um, such as uh, the, um, uh, the defrost system. 
and at the end the fan that push the cold air that come from here push the air through the air duct to the machine so here you can see two air duct and the air flow start from here and goes horizontally to the other part of the machine okay we can exit Now I want to, to call a tray. Claudio, while uh, you call the tray, I can see that here the light inside the bay of the, of the machine is, is green. What does it mean? Uh, can we have, I know that we can have different kind of color, like we will see right now. Can you explain a little bit what is the meaning of the green or the white or other colors? Yes, green color is when the machine is ready, is in automatic mode. When the, the, the tray um, is in the picking bay, uh, the color becomes white in order to, to help the, uh, the customer, the operators for the manual picking. We have uh, also uh, other dif different colors, for example, yellow, orange, that is a color that defines um, uh, possible alarms. For example, uh, uh, the temperature is not already reached. Uh, and so on, or other color, for example, blue for the installation mode. Okay, uh, about the air ending system, we speak about the limit of our system, so the minimum temperature that is possible to reach inside this kind of machine is uh, around 2 degrees, that uh, is uh, around 36 Fahrenheit. The maximum is around 25 degrees, around 77 Fahrenheit. Uh, at the beginning, I told you that it's possible to control also the, the relative humidity. Um, for this kind of application, we need to add an optional that is the dehumidifier. Control so, the temperature of uh, the machine is important for uh, customer, for example, in uh, food industries, grocery, uh, pharmaceutical application, also electronical application. Um, the, um, using the dehumidifier, um, we can go uh, to the customer, for example, in the um, electronical semiconductor application is very important in this application reach a very low level of relative humidity and with our system is possible to reach a relative humidity around 5% um, in a temperature that is 25 degrees so it's, it's very low Claudio, just to anticipate uh, maybe some questions that our guests could have I know that there is a relation between the temperature that we can reach and the relative, the minimum relative humidity that we can reach again. So can you tell us something about the correlation of these two parameters, temperature and humidity? Okay, so if we speak about the absolute um, humidity, we speak about a gram of steam in each kilogram of air and is an absolutely, absolute value. For example, the minimum uh, humidity, absolute humidity that is possible to reach here is one gram of steam in each kilogram of uh, air. Uh, the relative humidity obviously depends uh, of uh, the temperature. Uh, there is a, a very uh, strict um, relationship and um, 5% of relative humidity uh, with a temperature of 25 degrees, more or less uh, is one gram uh, in each kilogram of, um, of air. So one thing that is not possible basically to reach is if I want to have a 5% of relative humidity and the temperature, I don't know, of 5 degrees is something centigrade, is something that we cannot reach. So Absolutely. the two limits uh, is 5% rel relative humidity and around 25 centigrade, right? Absolutely. Okay. 
Um, just to remind you, uh, the chat are open, both on LinkedIn and YouTube. So if you have questions, we will answer all the questions at the end of the session. So now we go a little bit more in deep uh, regarding the climate control. Then we'll talk about the clean room. And at the end, all the questions will be answered. So you can go ahead, Claudio, with the... the yes. Inside our machine, there is an um, electrical cabinet to control the air and link system. Uh, inside, there is a PLC connected to, the, uh, to our electrical cabinet of the machine that is outside. Um, inside this, this machine, there are several um, sensors, temperature and relative humidity sensor, and it's possible have a look um, in our uh, co-pilot of uh, all the parameters that we set. For example, going here. So it's a sort here, of a supervisor a which gives you all the different uh, temperatures, uh, humidities, all the parameters that you have inside the machine. Yes. Using our copilot, it's possible to set all the parameters and uh, have a look of the temperature and um, um, relative humidity situation of, uh, of the machine. Claudio, can we quickly show how to usually uh, pick up a product when you're using the machine and how you can even, for example, open all the doors if you want to put inside, for example, a new tray or, or if you have to extract a tray from the machine? Okay. Here, there is an ins uh, insulated door that is possible to open in two ways. For example, um, standard manual picking is possible to do just opening this manual door, take the component and close the door. It's important to close the door quite quickly. We have yes, to remember. <laughs> otherwise uh, uh, there is a sort of advice uh, so that uh, is uh, an alarm uh, that advises that the door is remained open. So uh, obviously, because we have, it, it's good that we say that we control both temperature inside the bay and inside the machine. So obviously, if the temperature inside the bay reach is too high, for example, the machine itself uh, prevents the tray to come in. So uh, it's important that you pick and then you close the door in a few seconds. Yes, absolutely. It's possible to. Um, to have a set point of temperature and the relative humidity here on the bay and the machine start uh, to, to go in the automatic mode only when this temperature is reached and it's very useful to avoid thermal shock uh, in the tray that are behind this door. Here, this door is, uh, has also another way to, to be opened and uh, is a user this let's, one. Let's open it. <laughs> wide open. It's a wide open that uh, permit us uh, to put a uh, okay, big object, for example, but also to remove or insert a tray inside the machine. And uh, it's very easy, uh, very, um, very easy to, to do this activity. Um, Good. One thing that probably we have not mentioned, or we have mentioned but it's important to remind, is that the VLM itself is a standard VLM. So all the features, all the accessories, everything is available. And on top we have the cladding and we have the other features that are relevant for the temperature control and the humidity control. Uh, Claudio, it's more or less 15 minutes, so I think that we, we are more or less at the end of the explanation of the climate control. Yes. Do you have something else to add? Because no, otherwise I, we start with the clean room. I think that uh, that's all. Okay, very good. So uh, the next portion is the clean room. Uh, our clean room machine and our clean room that we use for all the tests is in a different building. So we have recorded uh, more or less one hour ago uh, the portion which is relevant to the clean room. So now what you will see right now so is a short movie of seven minutes regarding the, the clean room. And after that, we will be back live for the questions. Thank you for the moment. See, see you later. Thank you.
Hi again. As uh, mentioned a few seconds ago, uh, this portion of the show is uh, recorded because we want to um, explain you, describe you, and show you our clean room. And the clean room is based in a different building inside our campus. So I'm here with Claudio, and he will start nice. describing you what is a clean room. Okay, here you can see a clean room. The clean room, uh, for the people that uh, doesn't know the, the meaning of a clean room, is a sort of uh, um, closed environment, a closed room, uh, where inside the air is uh, filtered, is controlled. Here you can see above the uh, air duct to push the air filtered or take the air um, inside the air handling system. Um, um, clean room is, uh, is a room where um, inside uh, where we have a very small number of uh, particles with a defined uh, size and this number is lower than a value that uh, is written in, uh, in the regulation. Uh, we followed in this project uh, the European regulation that is the ISO uh, 14644 that uh, identify a sort of classification from ISO 1 to ISO 9. Um, there is a correspondence with the American regulation that uh, um, where they have a sort of uh, classification from class 1 to class 1 million. We would like to put our application in a, a clean room ISO 7 for Amer American uh, um, uh, uh, regulation is uh, around 10,000 where the class 10,000 is a class where the maximum number of particles with a size of 0 0.5 micron in each uh, cubic uh, feet is maximum 10,000. Very well, thank you Claudio. So this kind of application is very popular, I would say, in, uh, in specific sectors. Obviously it's a niche market, so we are talking about electronics, uh, semiconductor, pharma, labs, uh, this kind of stuff. So now we would like to discover what we have installed inside our clean room. So let's have a look. Doors open. So Claudio, what can we see here? Yes, here we have a um, lift, modular lift machine uh, with uh, some modifications. Um, in this project, we considered two main issues. First of all, the quantity of uh, pollution or dust uh, that is not uh, created uh, from our machine, uh, but uh, from the environment uh, and uh, could remain um, on our surface. And uh, uh, the second issue is uh, minimize the quantity of dust or pollution created uh, from our machine during the movement, during uh, its life. So now I call a tray just to, to show you the functioning of our machine. Okay, for the first issue, we modified the carter. Here you can see the carter in a stainless steel material. Uh, very flat, uh, very smooth, uh, to be easy to clean. Uh, also, the, all the bay um, is done uh, with um, uh, stainless, stainless steel material. The tray is in stainless steel uh, with a thickness of one millimeter, one millimeter, and uh, 1.5 millimeters, uh, in order to have a total capacity of uh, 500 kilograms. Um, in order to uh, minimize uh, the, the dust or the pollution that uh, uh, the machine uh, uh, could create during the movement, uh, we performed some modification. For example, if you know uh, the tray of the standard lift, the trays of standard lift have plastic skate here. Uh, we replaced them with uh, eight rollers to minimize the friction force. The shelf panel are in stainless steel. And uh, I would like to show you inside our machine 
So it's a little bit darker inside because obviously when the tray is in picking position we have the light. So it will take a few seconds to see a little bit better what is inside. Okay. Inside you can see the lift group, that is the group that take the, the tray and put the tray on the cell for the storage. The tray um, the, the lift group um, has uh, some modifications, for example, the side is are in uh, stainless steel material and you can see, here you can see only two rollers, but there are, they are, uh, there are four rollers on the bracket that help the tray doing the movement from the tray to the bay and from the bay to the tray. Uh, other modifications are on the shelves panel in all the structure and on the belt that has not the nylon treatment. Here you can see on the lift the chain that has a lubrification that is different from a standard lubrification. This lubrification is, is done with siliconic oil. And about the modification, that's all. Here you can see the ME, the new entry of uh, the lift and new generation family, is the smallest, but this, applica this application is uh, for all the series. And uh, um, here you can see in this machine a maximum high of uh, uh, less than three meters, two meter and, uh, and eight. Uh, so, which is the minimum height that we can grant for the application inside the clean rooms. Yes. So, we decided to have a, a shortest unit because this is a typical problem uh, for the application inside uh, the clean rooms. So, we start with 2.8 meters, which is a little bit different uh, compared to the standard uh, lift family. Okay. So for the rest, Claudio, I think that all the technical features and uh, options uh, of our standard modular lift uh, are also available for this special application, plus there are all the applications and the features needed for the clean room application. So thank you. Now we go back for the live session and uh, we can have uh, some questions, if any. So see you later. Okay. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Claudio. We are uh, now going to begin answering the questions submitting during the live. As a reminder, you can still uh, submit questions through the chat, both in LinkedIn and YouTube. So we have a few questions that we receive uh, through YouTube and LinkedIn. The first one is, uh, is there a high limit for climate control unit? Uh, the, the, our standard lift uh, has uh, a range in terms of high between uh, 3 uh, meters, 3.3 uh, uh, meters and uh, 16 meters. Uh, the maximum high for this application is uh, 14 meters. Yeah, it's, it's important, Claudio, also to mention that uh, we also need to have uh, some clearance on top of the units. So if you want to install, for example, a 14 meter high unit, we need 600 millimeters, 650 on top. Yes, absolutely. Another question from uh, the same person, how uniform is the temperature throughout the unit? Uh, depend of the height of the machine. In uh, our study, we noticed um, a tolerance between uh, uh, plus minus uh, two degree for the highest machine. This one was one of the main, uh, uh, I think, challenges uh, that we had because obviously the volume which is inside this unit, you can see this is a big unit and we can have even bigger units. So it was a challenge to grant an accuracy in, uh, inside such a big volume. And everything is also more challenging because obviously you do picking operations. So the volume inside is not sealed. So there are picking operations and so on. So it, it was a challenge. But yes, we reached an accuracy which we think is, is very important, plus minus two, two degrees. We do have another question from uh, YouTube again. What is uh, the energy, uh, what is the maximum, sorry, maximum time available or advised, both in second or minutes, for the opening of the doors for pick up or loading the goods into the bay? And I believe it's uh, related to the climate control. 
It's a, a very good question because, uh, as Max told before, uh, um, the accuracy of uh, the temperature or relative humidity uh, depend of uh, the number of uh, picking, depend of the time of each picking, and also the set point of accuracy that the customer wants to reach. And uh, also the temperature that you have in the environment. Yes, For example, obviously. here nowadays we probably have around uh, 30 degrees with a high degree of relative humidity. <laughs> Uh, um, we, we performed uh, um, an analysis uh, here, a test, uh, um, in order to reach a very low um, uh, relative humidity, so 5-10% of relative humidity at uh, 25 degree, that is a very low value. And uh, we noticed that uh, opening uh, the door uh, each uh, four or five minutes uh, and uh, uh, each uh, um, picking uh, um, has a, a medium time of uh, uh, 20 seconds, uh, we could keep the, um, uh, this uh, very low level of uh, relative humidity. So in general, Claudio, I think that we can say that there are many parameters that need to be checked. So for sure the external temperature and the external relative humidity of the environment, because this makes a huge difference. The accuracy that you want to have inside uh, the VLM. Uh, we have performed many times uh, tests to, to see where we are. So it's important that if you really need a very specific accuracy of temperature and relative humidity, we need to do some accurate analysis and, yes. and give you the, the results. We Absolutely. can do it. I believe we still have a few minutes for a question. Again, if you have any question, feel free to type on the chat. Next question, are this type of application available for all models or of VLM, vertical lift models? Uh, not for all models, uh, but for uh, the modular lift uh, machine. Yeah, one thing that probably we have not mentioned before is that the, the cladding, so the insulated panels that you see here, is uh, self-supported by the structure of our VLMs. So it's, and the modular lift has a structure that can grant this self-supporting method of uh, entering the, uh, the panels. Other VLMs or other series of our, of our VLMs don't have the same capability. Another question from YouTube, while opening a door for, a pick, for picking a part, what is the effect on the relative humidity? I believe it's... It's more or the less thing. the same question yes. that we answered before. So every time you open the door, obviously uh, there's uh, some air, external air, which is not treated, which enters the unit or enters the bay. Uh, so both temperature and relative humidity are affected. And that's why we mentioned that we control the environment inside the bay and we have a set point uh, and then we can decide what to do if the temperature or the relative humidity uh, rises too much compared to what we need to have inside the units. We have now a question on the tray payload for the clean room. Is it only 500k or can we have a higher payload for per tray? Uh, at the moment uh, it's uh, 500 kilogram. We are uh, studying uh, uh, to, to have uh, um, uh, so a different range of uh, a payload uh, as is possible for the standard machine. At the moment it's uh, 500 because uh, we have a different support. Uh, uh, we don't use uh, the plastic skate but uh, we use a roller so we need to pay attention on the friction force, so at the end, at the moment, it's possible with 500 kilograms. Uh, we have another question from LinkedIn on the height of the copilot, if it's fixed or, uh, or you can change the height. Uh, I believe this person uh, wanted to know a bit more in terms of eye of the copilot and the height of the operator that is using the machine. Talking, uh, you think about uh, climate control or talking about uh, clean room application? Okay. Okay. Email in the sorry in the question. Okay, about the climate control, the position of copilot is this one. We studied the the, the 
um, correct position for uh, ergonomic condition and uh, is also possible to remote the copilot in a different place around the machine. So the position is not really fixed. This is what we think is, is best. So it's probably around a meter 40, something like that. Uh, but it's possible to move it. Perfect. There's another question that I believe we already addressed. So all the lift model can be converted in a climate control unit? The um, modular lift, yes. Perfect. yes. If we are talking about, for example, the modular slim, which is another uh, machine that we have in our automatic warehouse that we have uh, in our portfolio, in that case, it's, it's not possible. You were asking for the modular lift? Yes, for the modular lift, yes. Then another question uh, from LinkedIn, how is the maintenance of a climate control unit? Uh, okay, um, the only um, the, the part that needed to be replaced is the filter, the air filter that is at the beginning of, uh, uh, of the um, air handling unit. Another question that we just got on uh, YouTube, can we extend, extend the face of the enclosure and have the operator enter and pick within the, so basically what is asking if it's possible to extend that part so the operator um, can pick within the machine? Yes, uh, look, typically, um, it, yes, it's, it's possible. Uh, basically, you need to uh, build a sort of uh, cabinet, a small cabinet where the operator can enter. So, which is the benefit in this case? Obviously, the benefit is that this cabinet can be conditioned with the same uh, temperature that you have inside the machine. So, in this case, you don't have to worry about opening the doors. So, it, it's possible. These are even more special applications. Uh, in some cases, um, customer asked to have uh, something like that. So, possibly, theoretically possible. Still, uh, we are running a bit late. I'm going to get the last question. Does Modula supply the HVAC equipment with the units? We supply, uh, typically we supply everything uh, except the chiller. Why we don't supply the chiller? Uh, because normally customers already have their preferred supplier of this kind of equipment. Uh, so they have their local support and everything. So only for the chiller, we tend to ask the customer to buy by itself. Everything else is supplied by Modula. Good. So thank you, Max, and thank you, Claudio, and thank you, everyone, for attending our live event. Uh, if you have uh, any other question that we were not able to address during the live, feel free to send us an email at marketing.modula.com. On the live chat, you can find the link to access our survey. We would appreciate to get your feedback and to improve our next events. Uh, you will also receive a follow-up email in 24, 48 hours with the link to access the, the registration of this live, as well as again, the link to access our survey. As always, uh, keep following us on LinkedIn and Facebook to be updated with the upcoming events and with our um, Modular World. On behalf of Modula and our presenter, thank you so much for joining us today and have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.